Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I want to do is talk about uh, language version managers, particularly uh, RBENV, PyEnv, and NVM. So basically those are going to handle version management, like, and not like version of like different libraries, but version of the language runtime um, for those, th for Ruby, for Python, for no, the reason why they're important is because oftentimes, I know especially like in Node, I'll run into this issue, uh, particularly with like Gatsby, um, where basically there's certain, you, you, you look at like uh, Gatsby projects from a year ago, um, they're using a different version of Gatsby that has some major changes, especially if it's like pre-Gatsby 4 or pre-Gatsby 3, there are some major breaking changes from each of those major version upgrades. And they generally rely on new features that are in newer or older versions of Node. So what happens is that if you use, um, particularly like some older versions of Node had certain libraries that aren't in the newer versions of Node built into Node. So you have to kind of switch not just your version of Gatsby, but your version of Node. Or if, if, the, if the code is using an older version of Gatsby, you need to make sure you're using an older version of Node. But it would be really annoying to have to uninstall node, reinstall node every time you want to use a different version. So what version managers do is they just allow you to manage that. Okay, so for, so basically there's NVM for node. Okay, there is PyEnv for Python. And generally, like if you've got a new computer and you're going to install one of these three languages, node, Python, uh, or Ruby, I would install it this way using this tool. Like I would install Python directly, I would install Node directly, I would install Ruby directly, I would install one of these tools. Okay, so that way you have it there. Okay, and they generally all work the same way. Okay, basically, like if I type in NVM help, give it the help flag so we can see all the different commands. You can see like if I want to install a particular version of Node, I just say NVM install and then I give it the version number I want to install. Okay, and then if I want to switch to that version, I just do NVM use, and then I can switch to that version. Okay, so I can be I can be like NVM use 16, which is what I do all the time, uh, because I've definitely noticed that there's a lot of issues, especially with React, when I'm using Node 18, and then sometimes when I'm using older versions of Gatsby, I got to switch over to Node 12. So uh, this just makes it easy. I just put in one command, and again, if I want to use 12, if I want to use Node 12, I just do NVM use 12, and now I'm using Node 12. Okay, and if I want to see all the different versions that I have currently installed, the command would be, is there an NVM list? Uh, usually there's like a list command. Uh, current ls, list installed versions, there we go. Okay, let's try that out, NVM ls. Okay, so these are all the versions I have installed here. Okay. So when you see the system, that's always referring to the one, like if you had previously installed Node directly onto your computer, that's going to fall under system. So that's like the, the already previously installed version of Node. So just so you can know what that means. And these are the ones I've installed with NVM. PyEnv works the same way. So if I do PyEnv dash dash version, okay, I mean PyEnv dash dash help. Okay, it's very similar look. Okay. So again, I can install a version of Python using pyenv install. Um, let's see here. Versions will be the command so I can see which ones I've installed. So if I type in pyenv versions, this is going to list anything that I've already installed. So right now, these are the versions of Python I have installed. I have my system version that I installed before I installed pyenv. This is the current active version. So you can see because it has the little asterisk next to it. And these are other versions of Python I have currently installed. Now, if I want to see like a list of other versions that are installed that I can use, uh, where's the command for that? Again, you can just look here, version file versions, when switch, command, exec, when install, set or show global Python versions, display helpful command, so Python versus set or show local applications, uh, list existing pyem shims, maybe that's it. No, I, don't I think it's just like pyem. If I do pi and install dash dash help, I think it's over here, right here, yep. List all available versions. So what I would do is I would do pi and dash dash install, I mean, install dash dash list. And then see these are all the different versions of Python that I could theoretically install. Okay, so right now I think I still have the newest version, but 
that's not like a dev version. So like I, I could install like the dev version of 3.11, meaning it hasn't officially been released. Um, but no, I always try to stick to the latest release. And then RBNV is going to be very similar. So RBNV dash dash help. Okay, so again, I can see which versions of Ruby I have installed by doing RBNV dash dash versions, or actually just versions. So I have two versions of Ruby installed plus my previously installed system version. And the reason why oftentimes there will be a system version even if you haven't installed it previously is particularly like on Mac and different versions of Linux, there are dependencies that, that already exist of Ruby, of Python, um, that are part of the operating system. So you generally like I know in Mac and older versions of Ubuntu, there were dependencies on Python 2. So you generally always had Python 2 already installed on your operating system. But everyone uses Python 3 nowadays, so you have to install it separately, and you have to use like a Python 3 command. But by using pyenv, I can switch between that, and I can just use Python. Um, with RB and V, I can switch between the system, the previously installed version of Ruby on a Mac, to one that I installed myself, which generally doesn't have all these like security issues so I could, that get in the way between you installing libraries. So it's just very useful to have this. And how do you install any of these? Just Google it. Just be like, how to install RB and V for Mac how to install PyNV for Windows, you know, and you'll find how to do it, okay? And again, you can see, like, I can, I can, um, this should be just Py and list all Py RBNV commands, because it should be use for, oh, okay, no, no, that's right. RBNV, the way you switch versions is you do RBNV global. So I would do RBNV global, and then I would list, like, the version that I want to switch to. Um, the reason being is that the way like it works with Ruby is that you can set a global version. Like basically, it'll always assume that you're using that version of Ruby. But if you're within like a project, you could set a local like version file and say, okay, so I would do RBENV local, and then give a version number, and it'll make it whenever I'm in that project, it'll just automatically switch. It'll like have a little put a little file in there that, that allows me to detect. Um, but yeah, I mean that's essentially what these these things do. Now, for other languages, sometimes they have something like this. Sometimes it's already built into just the language itself. So, like, uh, Rust has that pretty much built in with something with a tool called RustUp. So, if I do RustUp dash dash version, okay. Okay, and if I do, like, RustUp dash dash help, you know, I can, I can see, like, Show the active install tool chains for the profile. Update the tool chains. Like it has all the tools for me to like manage my versions of Rust. Um, Go doesn't have that. I wonder if there's a Go version manager. A Ballerina has that. I'm pretty sure. So if I go to Ballerina, uh, Ballerina dash dash help, or is it um, Bal dash dash help? Okay, and module commands. Yeah, and you can just update straight from there. Um, and I think you also have the ability to switch between versions in there too. So that's built right into the language. I need to go back and like play with Ballerina more. It's been a while since I've touched it. Ballerina is cool. It's like a language built for like cloud, um, particularly with like cloud infrastructure in mind. Um, but yeah, I think you guys get the idea. The point is like generally you want to learn how to, there's generally going to be some sort of tool out there that should make it easier for you to switch between versions of a language, which is generally going to be important because different, especially when you're working on older existing code, there's going to be points when older versions of the language are needed to run the code. And when you're working with like the newest version of different frameworks, then you're going to need like newer versions or slightly older versions, uh, of different, of not just the libraries, but the languages. And it's, this is where like trying to like replicate environments becomes such an issue. And this is where like Docker shines. Because in Docker, you can create like a sort of mini environment, a virtual environment that has like the right version of the language, the, the, right, the right everything kind of just set as like a photograph that you can just turn on. But I'm not talking about Docker in this particular video. You can watch my videos on Docker to understand how that works. But this is why like Docker is such a big deal. Because you can easily like instead of having to worry about installing all these things and switching versions and libraries, you can create sort of like a perfect box with all the right things at the right versions installed that you can just spin up whenever you need to deploy something. So 
Hopefully you guys found this useful. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Make sure to go check out grokoverflow.com and devnursery.com uh, for more content from me. And add me on LinkedIn. Follow me on Twitter at Alex Merced Coder. And make sure to join the Slack community uh, that you can find over there at devnursery.com. I'll see you all later.